Today we're going to talk about the things that you need to record on your computer and really quickly how you can go about doing it. It's a lot of fun, it's going to be very addicting, and it's going to be just as fun, if not more fun, as playing the instrument you've grown to love. So let's dig into it now, shall we? Chapter 1. The six things that you need to get started. First, you're going to need that computer or laptop that has the RAM that can handle doing the job and the sound card inside too that can help you produce better sound quality with your recordings. How much RAM do you need? Well, I'm using four gigabytes of RAM and let me tell you, you need more. You wanna get anywhere from eight gigabytes of RAM or more. The more RAM, the merrier. The more you're going to get to do recording. Second, the second thing that you're going to need is what they call a digital audio workstation. Throughout the video, I'm just going to refer to it as a DAW because that's what most people refer to it as. So get used to it, okay? This is going to be the mixer that you see on your computer, which allows you to record your tracks, mix them, and edit them. Also, it's going to display the plugins, which is another thing that you might need, as well as MIDI instruments, depending on what kind of music you're writing. Plugins are nothing more than something that you can download off the internet, like um, Guitar Rig 6 or Amp Pub by STL Tones to help you just plug your guitar straight into your USB interface and already have an amplifier there. No need to mic your real amplifier, which you can do if you want. The third thing, I already mentioned it, your USB interface. Shown in this picture, this is what you plug your instruments into, including microphones, which this also plugs into your monitors, headphones, and your computer. I like to use the Focusrite 2i2 because it comes with two channels. Each channel has its own plug. It can be either a microphone or a guitar cable in the middle. Number four. Now as a guitar player, I didn't actually have microphones, which is also going to be something that you need, but you're going to need microphones and the proper cables. If you're playing guitar, automatically I'm sure you guys already have the cables that you need to plug in your electric guitar, but microphones, hmm. How many of you guys have good quality microphones? I used a Shure SM48 microphone because I tried to spend $50 to just get a microphone and get the job done. Hmm. Big mistake. You have to do a lot of post processing to make that guitar signal from your amplifier sound good. No matter how good your guitar sounds, that microphone is going to botch it. That's better for vocals. I'm currently using a Shure SM57 microphone. Day and night. Now it just translates everything I play in my guitar amplifier right to my computer. So invest in good microphones. Number five, this is one that's often overlooked, but you need to have a room that has good acoustics. Sound travels, sound bounces, and your microphone is going to pick it up. Number six, the monitors, these are your speakers, or headphones. You are not going to want to go cheap with this either. You want to want headphones like these. These guys are made by Sennheiser and what it will do for you is it can cancel out the sound outside the headphones so all you're hearing is the music on your computer or your DAW for you to get more accurate audio mixing, editing, make it come out really good. Now that we've got all that good stuff knocked out of the way, you've got your guitar, you got your microphone, you've got your USB interface, you got your DAW, and you've even got some plugins that get you some post-processing techniques that you can use with your recording, but does it work? Chapter two is songwriting. You wanna to wanna to make sure that you've got all of your instruments nearby that you are going to be using when you make your recording. Um, you're gonna to wanna to save as much time as possible because the mixing and editing afterwards is going to take you much longer than your recording process. So get your guitar, your bass, keyboard, your instrument, get it right inside that home studio we've got going on and get it to where you can just get up, grab your guitar, start jamming, when you're done, you put that back, you grab your bass and you start plucking away. It's all about saving time. Step number two, on your recording, it's good to start out with your bass track. This is going to be your rhythm section or your beats. I like to start out with my drum pattern from the beginning of the song until the end of the song. And then I take my guitars and I do what they call double tracking. I'll play the song from beginning until end for my rhythm guitar, pan it to the left, and then I go back, I start at the beginning, and I re-record again to the end. Pan that track now all the way to the right. 
At this point, what you're going to want to do is stop what you're doing any further and mix it. You want to make sure that your guitar is being panned left and right, the, the audio is equal in both ears, and they're not overbearing to your drums because when you double track your guitars, they're going to sound really thick, loud, and mean. You can easily drown out your drums, and you don't want to do that in your recording. You want to make sure those drums are all there still. You want to pay attention to your cymbals because you don't want them to sound like mush. The other thing that you're going to want to do next, you're going to want to record your lead guitars over it. This is going to create your harmony. And after you get done with that, don't worry about mixing anything yet or editing. You're going to go to what they call your effects. If you listen to a lot of metal music or rock music, you can hear very faint. You can hear like little pick scraping or you can hear like little slides. These are what we mean by effects. Or you could like emphasize a certain spot of the song. You can just take that little section and record that guitar again right there, adding another layer. This is also called layering, which is going to make that section sound a lot more powerful. And you can even use a different equalizer setting for that guitar to add it more depth, or maybe you want to cut some more. So take your mids, crank them all the way up. One other thing that's very important for you to do is save regularly, save your project. And you never know, maybe you're going to get fed up at some point and you just need to take a break. If you save it, you can go out, do whatever, reset your mind, come back the next day and finish it. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is make sure you edit it and you spend time listening to it. If you've got multiple ways of listening to your track, do it. Then after that, boom, you export it. You save it to your computer that you can put to video and then upload to YouTube, Facebook, or anything like TikTok, all right? So that's it for my video. If you have anything that I missed in this video, please let me know down in the comments section. If you found it useful, please let me know. And also please help support my channel by hitting that subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching.